Hey folks, welcome back to Half Picks Guide to Industrial Craft. Uh, this is part four in the series. And in this video, I'll be covering how to craft and then wire effectively windmills, solar panels, water mills, geothermal generators, and we should be able to touch on high voltage lines. So to start, um, we'll have geothermal generator. And uh, geothermal generators act like regular generators in that they ha they accept fuel in the bottom slot and produce EU through that. Except the only fuel that they accept are buckets of lava. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing if you're playing single player. You of course uh, go to the nether from time to time and it can be a pain in the ass to drag 30 tons of rebatteries in there to set stuff up and whatnot. But since there's lakes of lava, quite literally, uh, that would be a very good option for trips to the nether. Uh, you would basically just take buckets of lava, chuck them in here. Uh, if this was hooked up to something, it would drain the bucket of lava, give your bucket back, fill up this panel, and this is your burn down. This, this uh, block here, as soon as that would empty, uh, you would need to put in another bucket. Uh, very high output per bucket of lava, by the way. Uh, it's it's actually very. If you run across very large lava fields somewhere, um, hooking up a geothermal uh, generator and a couple MFEs down in your uh, strip mining pit, and then fueling or uh, using that to fuel your uh, your powered or your mining drill would be an effective solution. <clears throat> uh, another type of generator that follows very closely to that one is the water mill and water mills are the second cheapest generator make and they also are very effective at uh, providing free energy um, they're a manual generator in that respect <coughs> excuse me because as you place these uh, you notice they have a reception bottom here. They only take buckets of water for the manual version. You throw that in there, and as it uses up the water that you've placed, the bucket drains down. And then you would click again, have another bucket in there ready, click, have another one in there ready. And this produces a, a modest amount of uh, energy by doing it in this fashion. Uh, if Consider it like an emergency start generator. <clears throat> if you're just short for a couple things and you don't feel like burning, a, burning off a whole stack of coal f inside your generators or some such, you could use this to, uh, to, to muddle your way through. <clears throat> Pardon me. Muddle your way through uh, getting enough energy in order to do something. Uh, there is a secondary way of using these that's automatic, and it involves putting them out in um, bodies of water by themselves. Now, I don't know how effective this setup is. Um, this is a second attempt to set this up. My first attempt was this entire pool with just one generator. As you can see, this is quite a sizable pool, but the amount of EU that the generator was producing was very subpar compared to uh, windmills and solar panels. So my suggestion would be not to uh, waste wiring and time and effort on trying to get the, get water mills uh, automated. Which brings us to our next um, free energy generator and that would be the solar panel. Uh, solar panels take a considerable amount of uh, materials in the form of the uh, first three components, two electrical circuits and a generator. Uh, but the other other portions are fairly simple to come by, coal dust and glass. Um, solar collectors, um, you require lots of these things in order to get any appreciable amount of energy out of them. They only produce one EU uh, per uh, unit of time. Uh, 
which requires you to set them up in what is called a solar flower arrangement and I will go over that uh, near the end of the near the end of the video notice they have no intake uh, they have an input up here for if you want to charge a rebattery and if I were to hook this up to a wire you would see that this lights up and that shows you that it is actually within line of sight of a uh, of the sky so it can make its energy in the first place but if I were to cover that up in some fashion like so that would turn off so make sure that it is uncovered and has unobscured line of sight to the sky glass will not obscure its vision vision to the uh, to the sky nor will the inf reinforced glass for industrial craft uh, reinforced glass for any other mod uh, su such as the obsidian glass and obsidian craft or uh, the reinforced glass from plasma craft or I don't know if plastic craft has any but uh, I know industrial crafts uh, glass types don't don't monkey with that so and as I said I'll go over how to wire those up effectively here in a moment the last generator that I will cover today is the windmill and I ha actually had a change of heart about windmills after uh, doing this tutorial and find them to be very very useful and they are produced with regular iron ingots four pieces of cable and a generator in the center and here we have a finished windmill windmills um, they have two stipulations to produce energy one being that they must be placed up rather high and the second being that they must have five blocks in every direction around the four sides uh, free of any other placed block uh, this does not include torches and it does not include players so you can work around them once you've placed them and these will generate anywhere between 0 and 3 EU per, t per unit of uh, measurement which on the long run they should outpower solar generators uh, and if you want to work at night you don't have to worry about your um, generators shutting down They'll, these work 24 hours a day as opposed to uh, just during the daylight hours and to start our setup tutorials I'll start with the windmills and if you take a look we are at the very high roof of the map that I'm on. I was lucky enough to have a mountain that is in fact so tall that it cut the tops of the trees off and this would be a typical setup for windmills. Right now the wind's not blowing very hard but that's okay. This is what that icon denotes and this will update in real time so the fuller this icon is the more energy this is putting out. So we'll check off four of them they all share the same wind output at the moment. It's okay. So, as I said previous, they need five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. And that dead space can be shared by more than one generator at a time. So this is a 7x7 seven seven square. And uh, these dead zones are actually covering two generators each. So obviously you want your wiring underneath your windmills and then these will deposit energy into an MFE. Now you might notice this red uh, this red wire and this is called a redstone switch and I'll go over crafting them here in a moment and what these do uh, they operate similar to MFEs in that they take current from several sides and they direct it into a single uh, combined current from their output. Uh, the only difference is uh, MFEs store energy if there's nothing wired to their output, but redstone wiring switches, they only combine the current and then send it on its way. There's no pause in the action, it's just a continuous flow. 
the accept current from all four sides and the top as a default setting. So these are taking inputs from these two generators. And then the output is actually on the bottom of this. If you apply redstone current to a redstone switch wire, the output for, goes from the bottom to the top, and then the bottom would accept current instead of outputting it. So these are a good way of um, bringing in several generators worth of uh, current into a, uh, into a single position. Next up is going to be the solar flower array and for an array you're going to need a, mi a minimum of one to five solar collectors and some wire. So the first thing you're going to do is decide where you want your collector just out of out of the way of any shade or other blocks over, that are hanging over. I'm going to place one two down. I'm going to pretend this machine block is our MFE. Jump up one. And I like to have an extra space to work with down here so I also put a second one on top. Or a second uh, piece of wire. I'm going to place a solar collector on the top and then around the four sides like so. Now this is what I call a solar panel pedal. Say that ten times fast. And then four of those would make a solar flower array. So petals and flowers. Uh, this produces five EU consistently during out the day, obviously, because you got five panels hooked up to it. And uh, these can also be placed in the ground as long as they're not uh, obscured in any manner. So I'm just going to fast forward here and show you a completed solar array. Alright, and as you can see here, we have a full solar flower array. And this will produce 20 EU at a time with zero loss over distance in our cabling because it's very short cabling from here to the storage unit. And this has not been running all that long, maybe three minutes if that. Uh, and it's already collected quite a substantial sum of energy. Which makes these, pr one of these setups will cover you well, if not completely, then near completely. The only downside is the amount of these generators that you need. This is a substantial amount of iron at work. Some people might not enjoy getting that much iron and putting it towards that because of course you have to make all your other machines and your storage units. Uh, you could easily get by with half of this and not feel any adverse effects because you have a bed. If it turns nighttime in single player, go sleep in it, your generators continue to work. Simple as that. Uh, following this video, there will be a short second portion to part four about generators. In that, we will cover uh, nuclear power, how to set that up, how to gather the mats to actually make it, and how to make sure not to blow yourself up and destroy your scenery in a massive way. Uh, it does take quite a while to do and I will also cover, I promise, I promise, I promise, I will cover high voltage transformers in that section as well. So stay tuned, part two of our fourth video is coming up shortly right after this.